In this question we're given the function y equals negative quantity one-third x minus one quantity cubed and then all of that over two. And what we're asked to do is to determine the parent function, state the argument, rearrange the argument if necessary to determine the values of k and d which are indicators of horizontal transformations, rearrange the function equation necessary to determine the values of a and c which are indicators of vertical transformations, and also to state the transformations in an appropriate order performed on the graph of the parent function to obtain the graph of the function given. Well, the first method that we're going to use to do that is to graph each transformation in the appropriate order and show the graph, uh, final graph given in a distinctive color. Second thing we're going to do is use the table method to determine the coordinates of the function given. And the third is to use the transformation formula, also known as the machine, to determine the coordinates of the function given and the graph. Well, first thing we need to do is ask ourselves what is the parent function, and in this case the parent function is y equals x cubed. The argument here is being cubed. Well, what is that argument? The argument is one-third x minus one. That's the quantity being cubed. So we can rearrange this if necessary to determine the values of k and d, and when we do that we get a k value of one-third and a d value of three. This is an indicator of a horizontal stretch. This is an indicator of a horizontal translation. Next, we can rearrange these, um, the equation, if necessary, to determine the values of a and c. What we notice right off is we can, as we already did, uh, factor out a one-third to get the argument in a little bit of a nicer form. And then we can recognize that a negative numerator over a, no over a value of two is kind of like uh, multiplying the numerator by negative uh, a half. And then we have zero added on the end, so our a value is negative one-half and our c value is zero. So to state these transformations in an appropriate order, we see that we have four transformations. Horizontally, the k value of one-third indicates a horizontal stretch of three. The d value of three indicates a translation to the right of three units. Vertically, an a value of negative a half is a reflection in the x-axis, followed by a vertical compression by a factor of one-half. And in this case, the c value is zero, which is like the default setting. We're going to graph each of these transformations in the order given. So we'll start with the parent. The parent function looks like this, and that's y equals x cubed. We then will consider a horizontal stretch by a factor of 3. What we're going to do here is multiply each x-coordinate by 3, so 2, 8 will become this point, which is 6, 8. 1, 1 will become 3, 1. 0, 0 will become 0, 0. Negative 1, 1, sorry, will become negative 3, negative 1. And finally, negative 2, negative 8 will become negative 6, negative 8. Notice how we didn't change any y coordinates because we were only horizontally stretching it. We can then ignore this uh, black curve and simply draw an appropriate curve through the blue points. And that's what this one is. It's quite, quite a bit wider, which is what's meant by a horizontal stretch. This is now one transformation into our four transformation process. The next thing we're going to do is consider a translation to the right three units. It says four here, I just noticed, but it's only three. So what we're going to do is simply add three to each x-coordinate. Because this is a horizontal translation, it doesn't affect the y-coordinate. Okay, this will be off the page, so we won't consider it for the time being. 0, 0 will map onto 3, 0. Uh, negative 3, negative 1 will map onto 0, negative 1. And negative 6, negative 8 will map onto negative 3, negative 8. So we can now ignore the blue curve and simply draw a curve through the green points. And it looks like that. It's been translated over three units. We're now two transformations in. And we're now going to consider the third transformation which is a reflection in the x-axis. This is what happens when we have a negative a value. So uh, what we do is we consider the first point negative 3, negative 8. Because we're reflecting in the x-axis, we're going to multiply the y-coordinate by negative 1. So it will become negative 3, positive 8. 0, negative 1 will become 0, 1. 3, 0 on the green curve will stay 3, 0. 
and 6, 1 on the green curve will become 6, negative 1. And we can now ignore this green curve and focus only on the blue coordinates and draw a new curve through them. And that's now three transformations into our four transformation process. The last transformation is a vertical compression by a factor of one half. And what we're going to do now is take each of these points and bring it half the distance to the x-axis. Negative 3, 8 will become negative 3, 4. 0, 1 will become 0, 1 half. 3, 0 will stay 3, 0. 6, negative 1 will become 6, negative 1 half. What we've done here is multiplied each y-coordinate by one half. We can now ignore all the blue curve and just focus on drawing a curve through those red points. And there it is. And that is our curve that we were asked to graph. Now, if we were to put all of those on one graph, it would look pretty crazy. And if you can focus on that red curve, it would be what we just drew. Now, what we can also do is look at the chart method. The points on the parent curve in this case are negative 2, negative 8, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 8. Well, with a k value of 1 third, we're going to multiply each x coordinate by 1 third, leaving the y coordinates the same. With a d value of 3, we're going to add 3 to each x coordinate, leaving the y values the same. With an a value of negative 1, we're going to multiply each, um, or sorry, with an a value of negative one half, we're going to multiply each y coordinate by negative one half, but leave the x coordinates the same, and a c value of zero leads to no change. So basically, what we're going to do is simply graph these points here on a curve. Now, I find it convenient to draw the parent function as well, the parent functions in black. Then to plot the points given in the chart on the graph, and then lastly to draw a curve that maintains the integrity of the original curve, but through the points given. The last uh, method here to use will be method three, which is the uh, formula or the machine. The machine says x, y will always map on to x over k plus d, a, y plus c. Well, a is negative a half, k is a third, d is three, and c is zero. So, if we take each of our five points on the parent function and plot them each through the machine, if x is negative two, it maps onto x over k plus d, and if y is negative eight, it maps onto a y plus c. Evaluating negative 2 over 1 third, we get negative 6. Negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. 4 plus negative 1 half times negative 8 is 4. 4 plus 0 is 4. So we've gotten this point on the original to map onto this as its image. When we determine each of the images, image points, in a similar manner, and again, the same process we did last time for method 2, we plot the parent. We don't have to do that, but we do it because it's a good habit to remind ourselves the behavior of the parent. Then we plot each of the points that we had a moment ago after transforming them through our machine, maintaining the integrity of the curve, of our parent curve, and uh, keeping the same general behavior, we graph the curve that we were asked to graph.